Hi, this is Marius Lamos, and I like to keep my promises. So today's aim is for me to keep a promise to you, that I made to you a couple of months back. If you go back to episode 9 of this series called Strategy and Show That Marathon Greece, the place where strategy was first uh, implemented, you will see that I had closed with a promise to you. I had promised that I would revisit the subject of strategy by discussing Mr. Drucker's, uh, Mr. Drucker's line that culture eats strategy for breakfast. Culture eats strategy for breakfast. Do you believe that? Because I don't. <laughs> I mean, as much as I respect Drucker's work, and I respect it a lot, mind you, the main issue that I take with this statement is that it indirectly assumes that culture and strategy are mutually exclusive, or that one can exist without the other, when in fact none of those statements is true. Now, I remember that one of the things that I was taught during my MBA studies <laughs> is that not having a strategy is actually a form of strategy in and of itself. Yeah, I agree. Not having a strategy is indeed a strategy. Just not a very good one, I might add. It's like drinking decaf coffee. Coffee without coffee, how good this thing can be? <laughs> I define strategy as one's overall approach to achieving certain object objectives. By overall, I mean that it's high level in nature. In other words, it consists of milestones that you need to hit in order to reach your objective. Strategy doesn't tell you how to hit your milestones, that's part of your tactics. Not having a strategy simply means that you have no milestones to hit in order to reach your objective. Culture, on the other hand, isn't as subjective as strategy. You have your culture whether you uh, identify it or not, whether you realize it or not. There's no question about it. I define culture as one's own personal constitution. If we're talking about a company, then we're talking about the company's constitution. I call it the constitution because just like a country's constitution, culture should be the ultimate law of the land. In other words, even if the parliament votes a law that goes against the constitution, the constitution would always prevail. So the law this law would be declared null and void. It's the same thing with, with culture. None of your decisions should, should ever go against your culture. Also, just like a country's constitution, your culture isn't supposed to change just to get you out of trouble whenever it suits you so. You either believe in certain things or you don't. Of course, just like with any other constitution, culture too can change. But that change should take place gradually. Should take place gradually and only after discussing with the parties affected by it and providing adequate warning. Otherwise, you're just using double standards. Then again, yeah, using double standards is a form of culture, just not a very, bad, uh, not a very good one. It's like having a strategy of no strategy. Not a very good one, strategy, not a very good strategy. So long story short, culture doesn't eat strategy for breakfast. For better or worse, this saying has become popular due to many people who share it on social media, but without having any relation whatsoever with, with the strategy work. In their attempt to justify their complete lack of strategic acumen, they have transmogrified the meaning of this expression, of this saying, to excuse their own deficiencies, to suit their own definitions. Sigma TV presents the results of a research they performed just a couple of days prior to the filming of this video, according to which 50%, 50% of super companies do not have a business plan. The situation is similar in many SMEs around the globe. <laughs> with uh, good luck about improving on improving your company's <clears throat> well-being by relying solely on culture. Strategy is an integral part of a business plan. Strategy 
is a supplement of culture, not a substitute. When one confronts the other, culture should always prevail. Not to, not to mention that culture isn't what you say you believe in, but rather what you demonstrate that you believe in. The admonition about throwing the first stone isn't a mere biblical parable. But that's enough for today. It's time to focus on the key outtake from today's video, which is none other than decaf coffee is a really bad form of concoction that you should avoid at all costs for your own well-being. <laughs>